Hello, this is Jerry at FiberConnects. I have a really quick question for you. Have you ever wanted to set up some VoIP office phones? Well, they're not that hard, and the good news is we're going to be doing that right here in a tutorial. We're going to set up a small office, not a small office, a small shop, a service shop, a heating company, which has a few support technicians and a couple people in the office. All right, so let's get right to it, okay? So, from the diagram in front of you, you can see that we have a few extensions, we have a few ring groups, we have some call director destinations, we have two menus, we have an office schedule, and a night mode toggle. This stuff may sound rather complicated setup in some in some systems, but uh, we're going to be using Rocket DID from FiberConnects. It's very simple, very straightforward, and rather easy to do. The first thing we're going to be doing is setting up the extensions, so let's get right to it. Okay, so now we got to log into Rocket DID here to um, create our extensions. First, we need our username and password. Always a good thing. As you can see, we have our number assigned, but it's not going anywhere because we have not configured anywhere for it to go. So the first thing we want to do is create our extensions. And if we look at our diagram, we got 201 for the reception person. Then we get the boss at 202, and then we got 3, 4, 205, and 206. So let's get the 201 done. There it is. The 201 was reception, and that's all we need. There's not all, anything else that we need to do to set up a basic, basic, basic extension functionality. That's it. It comes by default with the voicemail turned on. 202, eh, we said it was the boss, and again, the same thing. All right now let's go and add uh, 203 and 204 are the sales so 203 sales whoops one scroll down hit save then 204 I think it was right one two three four yeah for sales two it's two and scroll down and hit save and then we want uh, 205 and 206. 205, support one, save, and 206. That will be that. <laughs> yeah, okay, support two. <clears throat> so let's see, we got reception, the boss, sales one, sales two, support one and support two. Now at this point we can go on and configure other things but uh, um, one of the practices that I believe is very important is to make sure that the phones can talk to each other. So as soon as I have the extensions created in the PBX I like to go and program the phones. So we're going to get to that in one sec. Okay, so let's get the reception phone started first. Bring up the details for a reception phone and let's connect to the reception phone in another tab. There it is. <coughs> the reception phone is a Grandstream GXP2170, as you can see from your camera view there. Apologies for the blurriness. These uh, webcams aren't the greatest when it comes to detecting the brightness of various surfaces. So anyway, now as with all Grandstream phones, the first time you log in, they want you to change the password to be something other than the default. So let's go in, take care of that first. There we go, password set. And my mouse. That's a little too slow. Speed up the mouse. There we go. Oh, that's too fast. Right, so let's go grab the password for that. Go up there. Let's go in and create our first extension on. Now, one of the things with the grand streams is wrong spot. Network settings should always be set to keep alive. They don't default that way. I'm sure there's a reason. I don't know what it is reception and the name 
reception. Whoops. Reception. There we go. Voicemail to access voicemail. User ID for reception is 201. Authentication ID is 201. And the password is there. Now let's go grab. that SIP server is here oh, call 8081 wasn't anything at the beginning good no nothing at the beginning so now let's go grab the second one there we are there secondary SIP server in there And that should do it. Hit that. The phone should get a name. The name should turn green. There we go. It's turned green. And we can see that the little uh, right up here that turns on. We go to account status. Right. Here. My mouse is not working properly for me here. There we go. Okay, so we got green. We have green, and if we go up into rocket, we can go into status and check, and we will see it is connected twice. <clears throat> that is intentional because we set up the primary and the backup. Some phones will connect simultaneously on both. Some will only connect on one, and if the one fails, it will flip over to the backup. The connection time is milliseconds, so it really doesn't matter which way it goes as long as it does it reliably. So that is that phone connected. Now we can test the uh, voicemail to make sure the voicemail works simply by hitting the voicemail button. You have zero. So, voicemail works. We know that phone is talking successfully to the PBX. Now let's go on to the next phone. Okay, so the grand stream for the receptionist is done. Let's get ready for the boss's phone, shall we? This is boss is at 202, but first we need to go and hop over to the boss's phone. There's the bookmark. All right. So the Yale link doesn't uh, require us to change the password when we first log in after fresh install which is convenient okay so now we want account one we want the label to say boss the display name to say boss the register name is 202 the username is 202 and the password we just did a copy and there's the paste turn the line on then we go down, what is this? It registers. Oh, yes, disabled at the moment. Okay, fine. We want to change that. 8081. We want that. 8081. <clears throat> Let's go get the server names. Whoops, different window. There we are. And grab the other one. Put it in there. Okay, and is there anything else that we need to worry about? Nothing else jumps out, so let's hit confirm and see how it looks on the phone. Well, that came up awfully fast and it connected right away. So it says status registered. We go up here and we hit status and we see both phones exactly as we expected to all right so uh, let's get off to the next phone shall we okay so <clears throat> now we're going to do the phone that's associated with uh, person labeled sales one so let's go open up the connection to the phone itself sales one <clears throat> Polycom's default is 456, and I'm not changing it. There we go. <clears throat> These ones can be a bit, a little bit more of a challenge to get configured, but once you've done a few of them, it's not a problem. We need to open up that one, and that one, and that one. 
Yeah, there's a few of them, right? So label sales one address is 203. Label sales one. <coughs> one of these, um, as it says over here, is the one that shows up when um, you're making it up on call. It's the caller ID's name. The other one here is the button on the phone, the way it looks. Okay. In case you didn't know. Now, let's see. We want user ID is 203. Password. Let's go grab the password for 203. Grab that. We put the password right there. Now, then we got these. We got to change 8081 and 8081. And we go get the SIP server names. one of them stick it there and grab the other one put it there um, believe that'll get us done Does the label on the phone change? It does, and it has a little check mark beside it, which is a good sign. <coughs> so if we go, there is a status page here somewhere, but I just gonna skip looking for it because it's sometimes a challenge to find. And here we go, sales one is connected. And we can see it's the polycom. So let's just uh, quickly run over and get sales two done. Grab the creds for sales two. <coughs> there we are. Password. This is 204, sales two. Same as the other one. I realize I haven't checked the voicemail, but we made sure the first one worked and we're getting we'll, we, we will get to them all shortly. In line. There we go. And with the other one, open that up, open that up, open that up. This is sales two. 204 is the extension. Let's just make sure we got that right. 204, yes. And sales 2. There we are. 204 is the user ID. Let's get the password. Control C. And paste. All right, here for our little test environment here. <clears throat> host name put that in server one right there what about that space and grab the other one and put it in there and hit save yes let's uh, switch to the other phone before we hit the save so we can see the magic happen because having magic happen is always a good thing. All right, so it currently has a default on there. Let's save it. And there's sales two shows up. And we come over here and we hit status. It has a check mark in it. It looks right. But let's just check over here. Okay, so it sees sales two connecting successfully to the PBX. <coughs> right. So let's go hit support one since we seem to be on a bit of a roll here support one is 205 all right let's go hit support one phone while that comes up i'm going to rearrange the phones here so i can see it on the camera and there we go so that's the support one phone which is extension 205 there we go. Done. Nope, there we are. So as you can imagine, sometimes this can be a bit of a challenge when you have all kinds of windows to open up. But it can also be fairly quick if you've got some kind of a workflow, uh, work process that you use. And support one, support one. 205, let's go grab. Well, I already have it highlighted. This is five. Yes, it's highlight. Yes, it's highlighted the right one. 
Now here, 808 one. All right, now let's go get the server names. That's that one. And server two. And we save it. And the screen on the phone changes when we click yes, it does. And there we go, support one. And if we look on the PBX, we see support one is connected. We have one phone left to do. And that is number six, uh, number support two. So let's just get the camera moved. There we go. <coughs> and go here and hit support two. Let it come up while we go over here and get the credentials for support two. Got the password. The default again, 456. Polycom likes to use that for some reason. Now then, we want to go to one authentication. And this is extension number 206, I believe, just to be sure. 206 on the bottom here, 206 over here, 206 it is. S U P P O R T 2, 206, S U P P O R T. Mr. P. Too many spaces. There we go. We go down here and it's 206. We've already got the password in the buffer, in the paste buffer there. 8081. 8081. Now let's get the server names. Okay, and the other server name. And that should turn into support number two when we click yes. And with a check mark, which we got. Now we go back to the PBX, we check the status, and we see that all of the phones are connected. So <clears throat> now let's do the voicemail check on all the phones. We've tested the uh, reception phone at the beginning. All right, star nine seven. Dial. You have zero. Awesome. On this one, star nine seven. Dial. You have zero. Awesome. Okay, so now let's get the sales number two here. Star nine seven. Dial. You have Good. Zero. And the other one. Awesome. They're all connecting okay there. Now we just got to get over to the boss's phone because we never tested the voicemail on the boss's phone. And it's a different phone with the Polycom, uh, the uh, Yay Link, I mean. And there it is, but there's going to be a slight difference here. When we hit the envelope, little envelope button here, voicemail button, it's going to ask us to enter the code because it had not been entered previously. So, star nine seven, but it comes up with a dot. So we got to back up, hit that a couple times to get the asterisk to show up. There it is. And then the 9 and the 7, and we hit save. Right. Now, when we press the button, there we go. You have zero minutes. So, voicemail is working fine. Now, I'm going to press, uh, just dial some extensions from one another. So from um, support one, I'm going to dial support two. I don't know if we can see both. Yes, we can. Uh, support two is what, 206? So 205 to 206, 206. Bingo, bingo, awesome, okay. And then uh, 206 to 205, exactly what we want. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm hoping you can, let's try that. Raise the camera a bit. There we go. Okay, so 202 and 203. So 203 and 204. Sorry, 203. 
That's the other one over there. Excellent. 204. 204. We see it dialing here. Answer. Why not? Hello. So we get echo and feedback because they're so close to each other in proximity. So let's dial the Grand Stream phone from one of these. 201. Up. Oh, it says support 2 is calling reception, which is what we wanted. And let's get, uh, can we see the boss's phone? There's the boss's phone. We're going to dial 202 from, uh, I guess this is support 1. And there we go. And we hit answer. Hello, 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 hello. hello. Test. We got our audio going back and forth. So the phones can all dial their voicemails and they can all dial each other. Now, uh, let's see. That should be it for the moment on programming the phones. So, the phones have the basic programming done. That's their extensions, and they can call each other, and they can dial their voicemails. Now, let's set up the uh, parking lots and the BLFs. Uh, the parking lots require some configuration on the PBX, and then the uh, BLFs and the parking lots on the phone is simply on a phone-by-phone -phone basis. So let's get the parking lots configured right away. Easy enough to do. Parking lots down here. Well, uh, it logged me out because I timed out. It took too long. So let's go and log in again. There we go. Now, parking lots. We want to go to the parking lots. There we go. <coughs> Not turned on, as is showing right here. So let's turn it on. And we only need two parking lots for such a small office. And <coughs> we have two options here. When someone's left in a parking lot, they can be sent back to whoever it is that put them in the parking lot, or they can be sent to reception. Everyone seems to like having it going back where it came from. So leave it there. Right. <coughs> okay, first parking lot is star 851, and the last one is star 852. There's only two. So let's go off to the phones and program the parking lots, and then we will program the BLFs. Now we're going to start with the, the boss phone first, simply so I go across the top of my bar here. That's all I want to do. All right, so we go and... <coughs> 851 and 852. We log in here. And we want to put this on the yay link. We want to put it on, let's see, the left side. I'm just moving some phones so I can get a little bit of visibility on the yay link. That's the boss's phone. There it is. <coughs> okay, so we will put it on the two lower left corners for the parking lot. That will work. So let's go find a DSS key, uh, programmable keys. Hello. There we, ah, sorry, line keys. There we go. Okay, so one, two, three, there's five. One, two, three, four, five. So we want number four to be a call park. And number five to be a call park. The value is star eight five one and star eight whoops eight five two. And we want it to say park one and park two. And that should take care of that. And the lights are green. <coughs> we will test the call parks after we have the phones finished getting configuration configured so that one is that now let's go set it up on reception phone there we are admin and just so we don't time out again later because we're going to be doing the phones for a few moments here just keep it something that keeps it busy uh, fiber set the password in there now we want to go on this one to the multi-purpose keys and we want it on let's move the other phones out of the way so we can 
can see this font. Can we see it there? Yeah, more or less. Let's see if we can get a little bit better first. You out of the way, and so there. That should that'll do much better. Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, we have six on either side. We want the parking lots in the same place. So we'll start with that one. Default account one because that's the um, SIP account that has been uh, programmed. We want in the Grand Streams world they call them the monitored call park. Oops, sorry. <laughs> park one and star eight five one. Save that. Then this one here, monitored call park. Account one. P A R K two. Star eight five two. And save. And save them and they should connect unless I did a typo and I did not and they're green and that is exactly what we wanted to see so we have the two parking lots there now <coughs> the fun with the polycoms setting up the parking lots is a little bit more of a challenge they don't have a great deal of options they don't have a great deal of options for how to configure the various buttons when you want to put on BLFs and such. But it can be done. So let's go and hit the first one. This is sales one, but it doesn't matter. They're all the same. <coughs> all right, we want to go to soft key config. Apologies, line key config. And we want to add a key here. A label park one star eight five two and it's not a normal one for the parking lots. I believe it's the for the parking lots it's the automata. I I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Save that and it's got it there and it's green. Um Don't know if I got that right. Park one eight five two and that's the way it's supposed to be configured, but it's not showing the way I'm used to seeing it show. Well we just add the next one and this is correct, yes. Park two star eight five two. Auto. There we go. Save that. Already signed what? Oh, star eight five two. Did I put the wrong code in the other one? I did. That's what's tripping me up here. Okay. Now add. Park two eight five two and save. And then we have both parking lots configured. Yes, we do. Go to the next phone. Four five six. And the next phone is right here. Can we see that? Yes, we can. Uh, uh, where are you? I want to see. There we go. So we want to add P A R K 1 star 851. Save. Thank you. And P A R K save thank you and we have two parking lot buttons showing up we do indeed now let's see um next phone support let's move the camera oh we can see both at once here how about that Line key. 
Come on. Utility line key. Thank you. P A R K one star eight five one. Save it. And park two eight five two. Save it. And that takes care of support one. Now let's go hit support two. And that's the parking lots. Give me one sec and I'll be right back. Okay, so the parking lots are ready. Now, <clears throat> BLFs for the uh, other extensions. So we have room on the um, boss phone for the boss's phone for five BLFs on the right panel. As we can see with the camera, there we go. We got five buttons on the right. We get the sidecar as well, but <clears throat> for, for the moment, we're focusing on the buttons that are right on the display. So that gives us room for the four Polycom phones, as well as the reception phone. All right, so let's go put some BLFs on there to have the boss able to see who's on the phone. Uh, in the event that he wants to transfer a call to a specific person or he wants to call a specific person, they can he can see the boss, he or she, uh, are, uh, is able to identify if that person is on the phone. So let's go take care of that. That's an easy one to do. So keys, um, line keys, yes. When it gets there, there we go. <clears throat> so we want key number... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we're gonna have one on the second page. So let's get the second page done first because it's it's just quicker that way. So it's a line key. We want to be a BLF key. The value will be the extension 206. The label will be support. that and we've got what we wanted now to go do the first page <clears throat> page one all right so we want six through nine it's a BLF a BLF BLF okay so the value is 201 for the reception person Right, P T I O N I O N. Did I get that? No, I still missed it. There we go. Reception 203 because 202 is the boss themselves. 204 is sales 2. 205. And that should take care of that. And they all light up as expected. I just want to verify that I put the right one on the second 206 for support two. I did indeed. Okay, so now <clears throat> we have BLFs. So if, for example, I dial from here 206 to 205, I should see 205 is ringing, right? That's why it's flashing. And 206 is in use. So the red BLF light tells us that the line is in use. The flashing red light tells us that the line is ringing. If you have a BLF and you're monitoring and you see it ringing and you know the person's not at their desk, you can hit the button and take the call on their behalf. It'll just 
it, it'll, it'll uh, intercept the call. So let's go set the same thing up on the reception phone, which has six buttons on either side. So we have a little more real estate there. And in we go. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. There we are. Now, <clears throat> doesn't matter which way we go. Uh, BLF, count one. This is support two, and it's three o two o six, two o six. Okay. This is support one, BLF. PO, hmm? S U P P O R T one, which is extension two o five. Okay, and then we want sales two, which is at two o four. Then we want sales one, which is at two o three. And last but not least, his assistant, whoever is out at the front desk, 201. And what do we get on the phone? We get a bunch of lights showing up. And let's do the same thing. We'll have a call from um, sales one to support two. So that's going to be 2206. And we hit dial. And we see 206 is ringing. And there we go. And we answer. Now we'll see both in use for a moment. And we end the call and both are free. So OK, so the phones are doing what they're supposed to be doing. We've got the parking lots in place. We've got the BLFs in place. We've got the phones being able to dial each other. And the BLFs are showing us when the lines are in use, when they're ringing, and so forth, all as expected. Now, the next step is to uh, get the ring groups set up. Um, that's ring group 10 for the sales and ring group 11 for support. Okay, so let's go log in again. It did kick us out as I expected. There we go. So we want to create two ring groups. Ring groups, ring groups, there we go. <coughs> ring group 10, sales. We have options here, parallel, sequel, sequential, and uh, random. <coughs> Most people like parallel, so that's what we'll go for. Uh, we'll give it 20 seconds of ringing, <coughs> and according to our instructions, we go to extension, uh, reception there we go and this is sales and sales and that is it ring group 10 has been created <clears throat> now let's go create ring group what is it 11 support i keep missing that second p in parallel and where does it go it also goes to extension 201 if it times out 20 seconds there support support <clears throat> So what happens here is it rings for 20 seconds, and if no one answers, it goes off to this. In this case, it's going to extension 201. And there we go. That's that. The ring groups have been created. Um, okay, so now we need to uh, start working our way back up the tree. We can't call these things unless we work our way up. Um, but before we go there, we do need to set up a call director down here because the menus point to the call director. So let's go create five more extensions, and then we'll create the call director that goes to those extensions. Once we have the call director created, we can then create the menus, then the schedule, which points to the menus, and then another call director up here, which points to the two down here, and then send the phone number to that. All right. So let's go back in and create the call directors the the, the uh, on-call call director right here <clears throat> okay so this is going to be uh, we're going to put it on 81 I like to have night mode being the first one and name on call on call support 
Oh, I forgot one little piece here. We got to go do the extensions first because I got to be able to send the calls someplace, right? So they are to, what is it, 210. This is extension 210 for lack of a better name. And then we want to do <coughs> external call. Uh, 416, 416, what was it? 0210, 0210. And that's going to take the call and not even bother going to voicemail or anything. It's just going to turn around and send it straight back out. And we have an option here, <coughs> mask caller ID, so that they know that the call, when it gets to the cell phone here, it doesn't show up as uh, John Brown or, or, or Peter Williams or something of this nature. It shows up as the office calling. So they'll know it's coming from the office. That's that one. Now we got to go to create 211, extension 211, and it is a external call to 416-416-0211, and we do the masquerading again. All right, now we do the next one, 212. Huh? What did you do? Picked the wrong button. Add 212. Extension 212, external call with masquerading 416416012212. Yes. Okay, now add 213, 213, extension 213, external with masquerading 416416021312. And we have one more after this. Yes, one more. We have to go to 214. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Extension, uh, sorry, 214. It's the last one, yes. Extension 214. And 416, 416, 0, 2, 1, 4. So we now have <coughs> our four on-call support lines that will have... Um, the call is redirected to somebody's cell phone. So let's go put those into a call director. And well, well, we'll just leave them as is. I'm just say night mode here. And in night mode, we'll come back and finish this one off in a moment. And just leave it. It's not doing anything. 81. On call support and we have enable a few of them here there we go the default one is uh, extension extension ex they should all have extension listed on them because they're all being redirected to an extension <clears throat> this one goes here to 11 to 12 to 13 and to 14. <clears throat> so what's going to happen here is when a call comes in and we send the call to the call director for on-call support, depending on which one of these is active. Now, I can do it on the GUI here. I can go through like this and I can pick the one that's active. You know, we'll put, we'll leave 212 as active. So when we program the BLFs, that one will come up as red and the other ones will show up as green. And we'll get to that <clears throat> in a moment. Um, so that's the call director so it's, you, you, you'll have a button so if you're leaving the office and it's uh, whoever's uh, say John is on uh, the third one that John is on today so you want John to be the one who receives the calls so you hit the button to send it to John and what you program on the phone the BLS on the phone you'll put the person's name there and it just it just allows you to quickly re redirect all the calls when someone presses 5 on the IVR because if you remember up here the IVR says on call right down here so if you press the five key it will go to the call director and the call director will decide based upon which one is active where to send the call it will then send the call to 212 in this case because we don't have 212 turned on which will forward it to that phone number all right so uh let's see and save so we got them all set we got them all set we got them all set they're all enabled and we're good okay excellent so <clears throat> why don't we go and get um, our menus set up now, our IVRs, because <clears throat> the ring group is created, the extensions are created, the call director down here is created. We can now create our two menus. All right, so let's go create those. 
First, we need prompts. The message that says, hi, you've called Acme Heating Services um, and whatever, right? So the office hour ones, this is going to be the main greeting. And then we could upload the greeting here. So you'll get someone to professionally record the greeting and you'll, or you can just simply hit the record button here and you will get a code to dial to record it either way. All right, 11 after hours. Now we've got our two greetings. Those are just the greetings. Those are not the menus. We need those because the menus will want them. So 6501, this is called uh, off uh, main menu, <coughs> uses the main greeting. And <coughs> what happens here if someone um, doesn't enter the keys, doesn't press a two, doesn't press a zero, they call in, they hear it, but they don't press any buttons on their phone. What do you want to do? How many times do you want to play the greeting, right? Okay, that's what this is all about, timeouts. So we're just going to send it to extension on the first timeout. I'm going to send it to reception right away on the main greeting. <clears throat> They've made some errors, but we don't want to send it to reception right away because they might have typed in uh, extension uh, 222 and said, or, uh, you know, uh, some extension number by mistake. Oops, I entered the wrong one. Why send it to reception if they realize that? So give them a couple times before you send it to reception. Okay, now that's the main menu. <clears throat> the keys for the main menu are zero goes to reception. One goes to ring group. Ten sales. Two goes to ring group. Two, eleven for support. And five goes to the on call director. The on call call director. On call. There we go. And uh, one, two, three, four. That's that. Zero, one, two, and five are in there. So now let's create an IVR for after hours. After hours, there's no point in wasting people's times after hours. Give them a chance, right? Otherwise, go to voicemail 201 and timeout. Um, if there's timeouts right away, just send it straight. Okay, and if they let it loop through and they don't do anything, it goes to voicemail. Or you could be like some people. I've got some some customers, end the call. If you don't enter anything, go away. But it gives them three times to do it. If you're making an error, it means there's a human being there trying to type in something. And who knows, maybe the business card that they're looking at has got some markings on it and they entered the wrong one. So maybe you give them an option of doing it a couple times. All right, now the after hours, the keys. We had two keys for after hours. Five goes to the call director for on support. And zero went to the voicemail of reception. That's our <coughs> menus. Don't forget, we got to still upload the actual greetings, but that's the structure of the menu. Now, let's go and do our schedule. Call schedules. Add one. Uh, office hours. <clears throat> if it matches, then we go to the main menu. If it does not match, because it's outside of office hours, we go to the after hours menu. Now, the business is open Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. To 5 p.m. Ah, 5 p.m. because we're saying any minute. <clears throat> Eighth hour, any minute. Four o'clock in the afternoon, any minute within the 16th hour. So now <clears throat> this is telling us in color it's going to go to after hours right now because of the time of day. If you look up here, you see the time of day, right? Based on your time zone time of day now we have our schedule we need to put in our night mode call director now night mode up here we edit if it is on night mode is on then we go to an IVR and we go to another IVR <clears throat> now this is where the tricky piece comes in if you've pressed this one to make it night mode you put it to the after hours the default is to go to the main menu. And we're going to put a BLF that monitors 2301. 
not 2300, but 2301. And we save that. So <clears throat> all of the phones will have night mode capability, but not all of the phones will have the call directors because they simply do not have the real estate on the phones. So they're just an, isn't, there aren't enough buttons. So let's go put the night mode on each of the phones right now. And that will only take a moment. And then we'll have the night mode here. So anyone can toggle between night and day. And then we send the phone number into the call director. Let's go do that right now. Go to, here's our phone number. It's not going anywhere at the moment. We send it into the day mode, night mode call director. There it is. The call director <clears throat> then sends it to, depending on which way it's on or off, this way or to the schedule. Ah, we missed the schedule. Let's go fix that. The call director has to hit the schedule. When it's in normal mode, go to the schedule. There we go. Office hours. Office hours will determine. Right here, you're forcing night mode. Here, you're letting office hours take care of it. And office hours. Let's get the schedule and just be sure. Main menu after. Excellent. We've got it. All right. So let's go get the code for the call director. It is 2301 for night mode, right? 2301. Star 2301 is the code on a BLF on all of the phones. So let's start with the boss's phone. Okay. So <clears throat> off to the boss's phone. Right, we want to go to the keys, we want to go to the line keys, we want to put it right above park one. So there's park one, and it's going to be a BLF. The value is star 2301, and it's going to be night mode. We'll see how much of that shows up on the display. <coughs> and at night M, hmm, not what I was hoping for. Um, but that's fine. That's fine. It doesn't have to be a. Uh, it'd be nice if it was a little bit wider. And I'm sure there. I know there are settings in there, but I'm not going to worry about that at this point. All right. So now let's go put night mode on the reception phone. And off to the reception phone we go. And the reception's phone has enough room so we can stick it up on the top. We don't have to put it on the left hand side right above the parking lots. So that's what we will do. We will stick it on the top right. There we go. Right in here. This is a, yeah, a BLF, yes. Uh, description, night mode. Um, star 2301. And save it and apply it and there goes a light now let's see what happens when i press the button on one of those phones just to make sure that we got it right before we go on and do the same thing to all the other phones feature is now on okay it is red showing it is on night mode it is red over there as well showing it is on night mode Okay, this is good. This is exactly what we want. So now, let's do the same star 2301 on the Polycom phones. <coughs> very quick and very easy. <coughs> Four, five, six. And it's in the same place as the BLFs, the line key configs. We're just going to add it as a regular BLF here. Night mode star 2301 and just leave the type as that and which one are we looking at we're looking at sales one i believe so let's go point at the phone and it should turn red because it's already on on the other phones updated configured successfully and it is red yes now uh sales two right, the same thing to sales two there it is there. Uh, enter. Come on. There we go. Utility line key. Add. Night mode. Does it say the whole thing? It does actually say the whole thing on these phones. Oops. N I G H T N O. Capital N I mean. Uh, star 2301. And save. Did it go? I don't think it went. 
No, it didn't go. I didn't hit the button properly. There we go. Now it's got it, and it is red. I don't know if you can see that it is red. Up close, it shows it's red. Yes. Okay. Um, this guy, which is the support one. Log me in. Line key, there we go. Add it. Star 2301, save that. Can we tell if it's red when it It's red, how about that? We can see the redness on it. And the last of the phones. We go away and we come up here. <coughs> Oops, four, five, six. We still have one more thing we have to do, and that's the call director buttons on the reception phone and the boss phone. But we'll get there in a moment. So night mode star 2301. And do we get it red? It well, we can really see the red from that angle. It looks really good. Okay, good. So <coughs> now. Let's just test the night mode on these phones. We'll pick that one. What we'll just look. That is red. That one is red. That one is red. You're red. And you're red. So let's push you. Feature is now off. Feature's off, it says. And it is green. Hard to see the color. Well, it's not just green. It's just not lit. Right, and it's green over there, the third one up on the left, and the top one on the right over here. Okay, there. So, that's that. <coughs> okay, so let's go get, where do we have them at? Let's just check here, call directors. I want to go into the night mode call director. So there we are, 23. Um, it shouldn't be 2301. I've got the wrong code. The base code should have been a 1. Because it's 2300 here. And yeah, I got the wrong ones. I, I made a slight error there. Okay, so that's easy enough to fix. One, one, on call, on call support, and then we have those all going like that. We want that one live, we want to go to extension, 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 and extension. Then we want to 10, to 11, and to 12. 13, there we go, and 14, and that's better, so it's 23, <coughs> 10, 11, 12, and so forth, 23, 10 to 23, 14 is what we want to program, so let's go hit the boss's phone, and let's look at the boss's phone so we can see, there we go, oops, in, and in. <coughs> This is why I always test things as I go instead of some, uh, you know, massive amount of testing at the very end. Okay, now this is on the sidecar. We're putting this on the sidecar, so it's got to be on the extension panel. And it takes a moment to come to life. Thank you. Now, key one, two, three, four, five. All right now, I don't recall which is which off the top of my head. So we're just going to try the odd ones like this and see what we get. Our value, oops, 2310, call extension 210, and 2311, extension 2101. Let's just see, because I can't remember whether they, they go across. Ah, oh, that's exactly what I was looking for, yes. So wait for that to finish refreshing. Then I want a BLF here and a BLF here and on the bottom there. So 
12, extension 212, 2313, extension 213, 2314. Now, it might be that you don't have the labels like this. You might have John, you might have Robert, you might have Peter, Samuel, whatever, and you might have William there. Okay, and then boom, boom, boom. And as we can see, the one in the middle is red because we left that one turned on when we were over here. Right, it is turned on right there. <coughs> so that is. Now I'm going to need to know those names so I can put the same names on the other phone. Um, can't see it very well. I've got to move some phones. Give me one moment. Move a phone out of the way here. And there. Can we see closer? Yeah, we can see closer, but it's still not quite what I would like. that better? Yes, there we go. Okay, so, all right, I can see the other phone to get the names. Yes, good, excellent. Now, as I said, these ones here, you can see they're, they're green and green and red and green and green. So we should end up with the same thing when this one is done. There, excellent. Okay, so let's go hit the receptions phone program the same. Now that was 23, 10, 11, 12, and so forth. On the extension board, number one. There you go. One is BLF. I don't remember if it's one and three on this or not. Sometimes it's a little bit uh, challenging. The first one is John, and it is 23, 10. Huh? Oh, it wasn't following me. 2310. And then 2311. And that one was Roberts. So let's save those and see what we get. Okay, they're on the right hand side. And there we go. And then do we want them on the right or do we want them on the left? Probably want them on the left. So. None there, none there, BLF, 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 one, two, whoops, goofed, made a mistake on that one, one, two, three, and BLF, and BLF. So John, where did it go, come on, 2310. Robert was next. 2311. Uh, after Robert was Peter. 2312. After Peter, Samuel with an E. 2313. At the bottom was William. 13, 14 names, BLF, 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 all on account one. Good. So we hit save. And the center one should be red when it comes up. <coughs> Wait for the subscribes. There they are. Excellent. Now, I go over here and I press John. Feature is now on. John comes to life. And John is hard to see on that phone. Very hard to see on that phone. It's just, uh, oh. there we go. Can we see the red? We see the red is on the top one. Yes. 
we're getting some flickering because of the lights and stuff around here but we see it and we got it here there we are and we zoom out zoom in whatever uh, focus gets corrected okay good <coughs> All right, so we have all the buttons configured on all the phones, and we have our phone number calling into the night mode, and we have, I think, we've got it all sorted. So let's see, we come in here, we do this, that's good, we go to the night mode, we go to night mode, call director night mode, where are you? Call director night mode says to do this or do that depending upon the schedule up here it will go to different places or it will go there night mode is not turned on at the moment so it should go to night mode it should go to the schedule and the schedule will send it to the nighttime IVR now sadly we do not have <coughs> recordings to upload so have to record them so let's go record the prompts so the main reading <coughs> My piece of paper here. The main greeting is ready. Let's see. Main greeting. I got to dial 89010. Star 89010. Dial. Record your greeting at the tone. Press any key or stop talking to end the recording. Hello. Thank you for calling Acme Heating Services. If you know the extension of the person you're trying to reach, you may dial it at any time. Otherwise, you can press 0 for the receptionist, you can press 1 for sales, 2 for support, or 5 to reach the on-call support technician. Thank you, and again, have a great day. Bye. Okay, so we should have our greeting in there. And to list... Oh. It, so it's what 56010. Here we go. Hello, thank you for calling Acme Heating Services. Okay. If you know the. So now let's record the after hours greeting, which is going to be uh, 89011. Record your greeting at the tone. Press any key or stop talking to end the recording. Hello, you've reached Acme Heating Services. Unfortunately, our offices are closed. However, if you wish to leave a message, you can by pressing 0, or you can contact the after-hour support technician by pressing 5. Thank you for calling, and have yourself a great day. Bye. Okay, so now let's listen to it. 56011. Dial that. Hello, you've reached... Acme Heating Services. Unfortunately, our offices are closed. There we go. However, okay, so we got our greetings in place. We got our IVRs in place. All we need now is to uh, dial it and see what uh, see what we see. Uh, let me just grab another phone here. One that's got a long enough cable. There we go. Okay, that may not be quite long enough. Let's see. Well, we'll just have to do, well, that'll work right there, works. Okay, so, <coughs> um, we're going to set it up so that we hit the uh, two different ring groups, two different calls, and we should see both phones ring, and I don't know if we can see, yep, all right, we can see both of those, so let's dial, what's that number, 416-416-1221, and dial. Hello, you've reached Acme Heating Services. Unfortunately, our offices are closed. Crap. However, if you wish to leave that. a message, you can by pressing zero, or you can contact the after hours. Well, there's the zero. Person at extension 201 is not available. All right, that one went to voicemail, as expected. So let's go change the um, schedule. We just open it up a little bit and say, uh, what time is it right now? It is 3.45 in the morning. So anytime from 3 o'clock. There we go. Uh, hmm? No, I didn't do it right. 
3 a.m. Oh, that's because it's right. <laughs> uh, we got to go to Saturday here then. Gotcha. All right, so let's hit the redial. <clears throat> Hello. Thank there you we go. Calling. And services. if you know the extension of the person they're trying to reach, you for sales. Uh, yep. <coughs> I pressed one for sales. And there's the two phones ringing as expected. Okay. Let's push this back. Can we see the other two support lines? And we do. <coughs> that is a Hello. two. Thank you for calling Acme Heating Services. And we see those two lines ringing. Awesome. All right. So, and we saw, oh, I don't know if we could see it there. I will go up and redo those exact same calls so you can see. Hello. Thank you for calling. One first. So we should see the two sales phones ringing. They're ringing on that. Oops, can't see that. There we go. They're ringing there. And they're ringing as expected. Now let's do the support with the two. Hello, thank you for calling. There, I press the two. And the two support lines are ringing, and the two support lines are ringing. So there we go. Now, um, if I put it on night mode by pressing the night mode button on any of the phones, really, well, I'll just do that. Feature is now on. Okay, all of the night mode lights just lit up. And I'm going to call again, and we should hit the after hours menu right away. Hello, you've reached Acme Heating Services. Unfortunately, we go. our offices are closed. Okay, so we know that the after hours Feature night mode button works. Off. We got the call schedule, we could see that working. We got the ring groups, we could see the BLFs. We have everything is going great. So at this point, we have everything covered, and the only thing left is for the individual users to dial their voicemails and record their names and record their greetings. Again, this is Jerry at Fiber Connects. I hope you enjoyed uh, or at least learned something from this uh, rather lengthy tutorial on setting up six phones in a small uh, maintenance type business where they would have the people in the office and some people on the outside that would be uh, on-call staff that get called at uh, different days of the week. They would simply press the call, uh, call director buttons to say who's on call for a given day and um, the calls would get forwarded up to their cell phones. Alright, you guys take care and bye for now.